You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring the scripture and all things related to it. New episodes are released daily. For more information, check out glossahouse.com and subscribe to our channels on Spotify and YouTube. Welcome and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Proof Text. I'm Michael Halcom, and today I'm here with my buddy J.M. Smith, the uh, founder of DiscipleDojo.org and Disciple Dojo Ministries and all kinds of other cool stuff. Uh, J.M., it's good to see you, brother. You're doing all right? You too. I'm doing well, man. It's good to connect again. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so uh, we this is, this is an episode of 10 Questions. And uh, in these episodes, I get five questions. J.M. gets five. We usually alternate between, like, one New Testament verse, one Old Testament verse. And um, part of the goal here, right, is we see all all kinds of scripture verses, like, out in the wild by themselves, like on T-shirts, on cups, on, you know, engravings, and, you know, uh, just they're, they're isolated. And mm. because that's the case, I mean, we I think we would both agree it's better to read not in isolation, like, you know, read the whole context. Um, but we're always going to see verses in isolation. And so uh, we're kind of demonstrating what do we do uh, as serious students of Scripture when we encounter verses in isolation and uh, hoping to encourage you, if you're watching or listening, to maybe do the same, something similar. So uh, J.M. doesn't really ever know what verse I'm going to throw his way, uh, but today we're going to start with, the New Testament, I think we kind of established a little rule, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, um, that when it's New Testament, you get first dibs on questions. And when it's Old Testament, I get first dibs, or is it vice versa? Is that right? I think No, I think that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's what we've been doing like at how... least. I don't know. We're building the plane as we yeah. fly it. Who knows? <laughs> So um, we are going to find ourselves today in 1 John 3.17. And while JM is pulling that up, um, I'm going to also pull that up on our screen. So if you're watching, you'll be able to see that. 1 John 3.17, I have the SPL Greek open and uh, I have the Young's Literal. Let me switch out from the Young's Literal to the NIV and we'll come back to this. 1 John 3.17. And um, it says this, this is how the NIV translates it. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Question mark. All right, JM. So uh, you're up first. Oh, all right. So my first question is having so material possessions doesn't seem to be what is in Greek. Right. Um, <laughs> but my Greek yeah. is not good enough to sight read Tom Tom yeah, Tom beyond to Cosmo, is that's what being translated as material yeah. possessions? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, I just want to know why the life of the world. I mean, is that life of the world? Yeah, basically. But, yeah. Yeah. I is how where how did they get material possessions from this uh, living things oh, of the world or what? I, like I said, I'm going to defer to the Greek professor here in this discussion, but right off the bat, that's what threw me when I first looked at this. So that's my first yeah, question. Um, I love that. That that just makes me laugh. The life of the world is translated as material possessions here. Um, also, life of the world is singular. Uh, material possessions is plural. But uh, anyway, so that that's just funny to me. Um, so I think you, you nailed something there. Yeah. Uh, so looking at, you know, words here, um, all right. So we have, 
uh, and sees his brother, sees his sibling. Whenever, whenever I tra- whenever I encounter um, Adolfos in the scripture, I always translate it as sibling or in the plural as siblings. Um, the NIV has tried to capture that by adding a brother or sister. That that's not what it says. It just says his sibling. So um, my question is it's two parts. One, why do they translate it a brother or sister when it just says his sibling? And the more important question B, is the sibling an actual blood relation? Um, or like, you know, what is the, what is the kinship relation here? Spiritual? Is it, and is it, yeah, so that's my first question. It's two part. And then I probably will have a follow up on that, but yeah. All right. My next, I'm, so I'm just looking at the Greek and trying to see this. And if viewers are listening, I mean, this is because my Greek is very rudimentary. I have to go through and like woodenly literally do it in my head and then see, okay, now how, how are the translations doing this? Cause the people that do the translations, you know, they're not dummies. Um, they're not right. just making stuff up. They have reasons, even if we don't always know. So that um, life of the world is is the first one that I asked about. My second question is the next one. Um, uh, que clise te I knew you were going there. <laughs> so and and shuts his yep. gut. Splunkna is like affection or I don't, I mean, I know that in a verb form when Jesus experiences this. And Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my next question is that I'd have to figure out is what does that mean to close off it? What does Young say? Young's literal says, and may shut up his bowels from him. Yeah, it is Um, plural, by the way. It's Hasplunkna, it's plural. mm Mm-hmm. So, and King James has, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion. So King James Mm -hmm. even has a little uh, interpretive. So that's, those are, I mean, these are repetitive, but they're the questions that I think you have to start with is what do these actually phrases mean? There's two phrases here that just seem weird. Mm -hmm. Don't read that way if you read the modern English translations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So interesting. Um, my second question would, I guess, be around agape. Um, we often hear that translated as unconditional love, or people like waxing eloquent on the word agape um, mm. in scripture. If that's really the case. Why didn't the translators translate this as agape love or unconditional love? How was the unconditional love of God remaining in him? So um, is what is agape? Is it translated correctly? Um, yeah, so that's my next okay. two-pronged question. Well, I'll jump on that for my third question and say that what kind of genitive is that to Theu, like the love of oh, God? Is it is is this saying that the person doesn't have like God's love manifesting through them, or is this person is it saying this person doesn't love God? Like love of God meaning the love that they are supposed to exhibit towards God. Um which which is it? Or is mm. it both? Is it intentionally able to do double duty? <clears throat> mm. Yeah. Um, my next question, third question, I come back to this to Adelfon, Ton Adelfon. Um, we may we may disagree here uh, a bit, J, uh, J.M., mm. but um, when when I read uh, things like uh, sibling, the sibling language in the the New Testament, especially, but you know, some in the Old Testament as well. Um, I tend to think that it's referring to 
another believer. Mm. I'm not necessarily. So my first question was like, is it physical, Ken? Is it spiritual? I tend to think that it, it probably go goes toward like spiritual, like another Christian. Um, and I'm wondering, um, well, I, you know, I was like relating this to the idea of, of neighbor. We often hear the term neighbor, like love your neighbor. Right. Right. Okay. Um, and we think that that's just like, any old person, anybody across the street, when in fact, I tend to think that when it says love your neighbor, it's talking also about a, a fellow believer within the household of God, not just any old person. No, that's where we probably maybe disagree. I don't know. But um, I would want to, I would, yeah, I would want to hear the, I mean, not on this podcast, but I would want to hear the extended yeah, yeah. argument for that in light of the Good Samaritan parable. Yeah. Um, yeah but, and particularly but, in light of that. Yes. But for so, for what you're saying, I Delphine, that I like that's that makes more sense to me for sure than than neighbor. Yeah. I don't know if I'm with you yet on neighbor, but I think yep. I'm with you yep. on brother <laughs> or sibling. Yeah, 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 sure. So yeah. I'm I'm wondering just like exegetically with that sort of knocking around in the back of my head, I'm wondering if um there's a connection there between neighbor and brother um yeah so i don't know maybe it has nothing to even do with this passage but as as a scripture reader that's something that i'm bringing to the table so it's rolling around in my head and that's a question i have huh hmm. i wonder if, if sibling language can have the same sort of uh, meaning as the the neighbor language hmm. Hmm. My so my next question then I guess this is my fourth one. I'm keeping track, by the way. That's why I have my pencil here. Nice. Because we always get lost in it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna keep track this time. Um my next question is jumping into that your your mentioning of brother, this is not the first verse. Like this whole section is right. about brothers. And Starting up in verse 11, where it says, you know, the message you have heard from the beginning, we should love one another. Then mm -hmm. verse 12 compares it with Cain, who murdered his brother. Then verse 13, do not marvel, brothers, if the world hates you. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, uh, we love the brothers. Verse 15, like brother is in every single verse or mm -hmm. sibling is in every single verse. So yeah. why, yeah, I would want to know what's the, the significance of that Adolfas language. I mean, he, re, repetition usually means pay attention, you know, this is important. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Absolutely. this verse is being, this word is being repeated a lot. So that's my fourth question yeah. is why is, is this such a sticking or such a major emphasis in this section? Yeah, um, but just on a, t a side note, that's a, a really good question. You know, I was talking before about agape, how it's often translated unconditional love. I was just speaking in a church context, um, doing like a workshop not too long ago, and I was talking, I was going through all the Hebrew words for love and then all the Greek words for love, hmm. and I uh, got to agape, and this one person in the room was, oh, I love this word. I was just teaching our our home group about this, you know, and um, was an older older lady, and she was just going on and on about, you know, agape being unconditional love. And I was trying to pump the brakes a little bit. And make, well, I don't know if that's the best translation of it, you know. <laughs> and I was showing her how philo and agape, um, or phile and agape, mm. often overlap, right? Um, and then there are some instances where it doesn't make sense at all to translate Agape is like unconditional love, but you know I, I see in the next verse we have the verb form, technia me agapomen. Uh, children, do not let us love in word, or do not let us love in uh, a, a word or in speech. 
It would be weird to translate that. Don't let us love unconditionally in word or speech. Mm. But uh, in work and truth. I just, I don't know. It doesn't work to really do it unconditional. <laughs> I don't think. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, so I'm just curious about what is the immediate context of, um, why is he talking about a, a sibling who has a need? Is there a specific need that is being felt in this particular community that's being addressed? Or is it just like any old need in general? Hmm. And I, since I've already done like all two part questions, I'm going to do another one. So, and so is it a sibling or a, a fellow believer? uh that has a need right um and oh well i was gonna i forgot what i was gonna ask for i was gonna go with that the sibling <laughs> have a need um and you, and you close up your bowels yeah i forgot never mind Sorry. <laughs> well then i'll just do my fifth question um I think I would want to ask what this whole section, uh, first John, first John is, this is my question. What genre of writing are we reading? Um, is this an epistle or is this a sermon? Because mm. I've always, I've often heard first John is not exactly like a letter of Paul or, or Peter or James, that mm. it's more of a, uh homily that's yeah if, is this a homily mm. is he preaching or is he addressing a specific situation or is he doing mm. both that would be my fifth and final question very good i remember where i was going to go with my fifth question um two-parter so the if you see a sibling if he sees a sibling in need or having a need and closes his bowels toward him. Um, so is, um, does this apply then only to siblings in the faith, or does it apply to like a stranger, you know, uh, to maybe a non-believing neighbor? Right. Does the same order apply, or does, does the same, um, not order, but point apply, that if you don't, if you close up your splanknas, uh to them, to any old person, not just a sibling in the faith, but any old person. Like a panhandler uh, or somebody on the street. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do you not have the love of God in you? That's a great example, the panhandler. Hmm. Um, and, you know, what, what does it mean to close your splanknas to him, as you were asking? Does that mean you have to give? Does that mean you have to, I mean, could you just pray? Could you think about them? Like, what, what is it? How is closing your splankna? Like, yeah, like, what does yeah. that look like? Uh, internal, external? Um, mm. So, I, and I'm really tripped out by the love of God doesn't remain and isn't remaining in him. Um, yeah. that's interesting to think about the love of God leaving, um, someone. Now mm. we could also translate this JM as, uh, and he closes up his splanknas toward him. How does the love of God, um, remain in it, the splankna? Um, you know, I also wonder, could the love of God be not remaining in that situation? Like the avto is ambiguous a little bit there. What is the avto referring to? Mm. Um, lots of questions about this verse. Yeah, it gets more interesting the more I look at it. <laughs> and coming back to the first question, what is the the life of the world and 
who has that? Like what, what constitutes having that? Like how much do you have to have to qualify as one who has that? Uh, mm. Does this hit different for a poor person than a rich person than a middle-class person? Like, yeah, those are, that's right. why I want to ask. That's why my f- final question is about the genre. Um, is this a preaching point, a general, let the spirit apply it as he will, or is this a, you know, more literalistic directions to a church community. So anyway, yeah, that's more than I thought would be in this passage. As soon as you pulled it up. Yeah, man. (laughs) And we could keep going. I'm very curious about its connection, especially the preceding verse. Um, I mean, even the two back, the one hating his sibling is a murderer. Yeah, and you know, no murderer has everlasting life uh, remaining in him. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll stop there. I mean, that's a that's a lot interesting stuff for sure. Uh, again, we hope hope we're just showing like when you see these verses out in the wild by themselves, man. We we have every right and should have every inclination to ask so many questions about what that verse means and is doing and how it's being used and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, let's wrap up there. Uh, um, When you're done watching or listening to this, head over to discipledojo.org. Check out all the great free resources there and uh, the YouTube page as well. Check out glosahouse.com and the YouTube, um, Glosa House YouTube channel, which we're starting to call Glosa House TV. Kind of distinguishing it from the audio form which we're just calling proof text, I guess now. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> so lots of free stuff on both sites. Um, yeah. yeah. So we are uh, going to wrap it up there uh, and we'll stop and say, we hope that helps. Interested in growing your ancient language skills, but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glossa House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glossahouse.com today. Glossa House, language resources for the global community.